My name's Graham Dennis. I'm the Commercial Director of Preclinical Pharma at IDBS. Uh, this role requires me to approach uh, pharma informatics from the domain perspective versus looking at our products vertically. How can we thread sort of a relevant story for pharma scientists, whether they're in bioanalysis, bioprocess, formulation, or even discovery, uh, through our suite in a meaningful way uh, that gets them excited about the tools. IDBS is sort of a long-standing leading vendor in the scientific informatics space. At the center of that is our flagship product, eWorkbook, which is a platform environment uh, that spans across inventory request, uh, advanced spreadsheet data modeling tools uh, to enable scientists at the bench. So we see really one overriding trend, and it's the it's the desire to treat data as an asset in the organization. And as that sort of takes flight, it looks like having a data strategy, a scientific data strategy for our organization in pharma. What this really comes down to is decoupling the data from the system of acquisition, say the workstation, the instrument, and the system of use, which could be any of a zillion analytical tools. This permits us to then really leverage the data, not just for the purpose that we gathered it today, but for use cases in the future, you know, using a tool we may not even anticipate now or a mode of investigation that we don't practice now. We see this with high content in imaging, screening data, even, you know, in vivo, in vitro analysis as well, say in bioanalysis, bioprocess. Also capturing the learnings that we gain in those process. Oftentimes, especially in the absence of an ELN, these learnings will just be lost to history. And so retaining data, contextualizing it, providing that data provenance so that when I use a piece of data in the future, I know when it was acquired, by whom, using what instrument, under what circumstance, at what site, under what project. And then I have data that truly stands alone as an asset that's reusable, that's findable, and so on. We find a lot of data today is siloed or so-called dark data. So it may live on a SharePoint, it may live in email quite candidly, or it's certainly sequestered in paper. So how can we at IDBS, or honestly just in our industry, make this data accessible in the long term, treat it as a freestanding asset and one of the most important assets we have? Yeah, absolutely. So in bioanalysis specifically, an enormous focus on how do we contract the timeline to perform QC and how do we increase the throughput in the laboratory. So that can be accomplished a few different ways. Candidly, it can be approached by a hardware, it can be approached by training, say, and we can approach it, of course, from the software angle, which is our emphasis. I do see the same trends making an impact. In contract bioanalysis, the pressures are even higher because contract bioanalysis firms are being asked to create more capacity, do this work cheaper, be prepared for greater variability in the kind of tests we're being asked to do, do it and stay in compliance with legal regulations and industry regulations varying across the world and to continue to build their reputation as they do so. So how do we make sure that every implementation is a successful one? So this really becomes more of an organizational question than a software one. We have to bring together people, systems, and culture to, to put the significant energy that's required into a successful implementation. This starts to look like coming together to answer questions that might not have been answered within our organization before. What is it we consider a project? In the discovery space, a, a notion of a project may be a protein or a disease state. In preclinical, it probably centers around a candidate compound. So how do we answer organizationally some of these tough questions that are going to help us form a data strategy that is responsive to these different areas of the business? So this all contributes to how we make our data findable, accessible, fully contextualized. Then. Once we've considered it internal to our organization, how about our collaborations with our external partners? And this, this is the mode of drug discovery now, is partnerships within academia, industry, government. 
how can we be responsive to those needs around sharing data, which can be a compliance issue itself now? How can we ensure the integrity of our data so that it's reproducible and it responds to ethical considerations in our industry? And finally, how are we responsive in a compliance frame as well, whether it's an IND application, a regulatory response to an inquiry we may have received, all of these require the same level of data, accessibility, indexing, and uh, consistency that uh, only just recently, I think, has the industry really started to achieve. Yeah, so again, the greatest gains in productivity we see are in the QC uh, capturing deviations from process. So this is where a platform approach can really come into play because we can draw in different elements of a scientific method execution tool slash ELN slash sample management slash method management to bring in something that's sort of right size to the process. So for example, in bioanalysis, we can have method execution elements where we can further capture you know, what lots of solvent were used, what instrumentation was used, was that instrument cleared for use, right? And then this really tightens up the QC process so that we can, as we capture these deviations, as we step through, uh, these can be rolled up in an exception report, right? That what we found working with our clients can take a week or two in a paper process to assemble. Uh, it's, a, it's literally a click in a system like the one that we've designed. Incidentally, this same kind of workflow-oriented solution, right, where we have stepped back from the products and just said, what do scientists need? We are applying in other areas, right? Because configuration, when we implement scientific tools, configuration and sort of working with a scientist to deploy something that works is the, is the biggest part of implementation. So, what we want to do is offer, when someone starts out with IDBS, here's our formulation solution, here's our bioanalysis solution, here's our bioprocess solution, in a way that we can tweak to fit the specific needs of our customer, right? But we have the closest possible thing in discovery science, development science, to a turnkey solution. And that's, that's an area that I'm looking to help uh, IDBS grow. Right, so I mentioned uh, expanding this idea of solutions. So versus referring to our product family, which of course is growing, in my role especially, how can we cut across the product family with meaningful solutions, right? And they answer specific industry needs. So of course my inclination is that IDBS is the, the best tool to be brought to bear on any of these workflows. Uh, so I want to identify and really clear up what are these clear advantage positions for us and then how can we bring them to market. So, and that'll involve like shows like the one we're at today, AAPS, uh, putting, uh, illustrating the commercial value to these customers, whether it's a CRO or whether it's in-house analysis, right? Just maybe in a quick additional thought on that. Something that we see happening as companies undertake a platform approach is, especially in the IT and leadership areas, they tend to ask the question, why can't we use the same system in our discovery areas as we do in our, you know, highly regulated GXP areas? Well, to the scientist, that answer is very clear. We can't have a discovery scientist clicking through six or seven screens to run one sample because that process works best in GXP, right? So that's one thing that we're exploring as well is the idea of workflow as a service, right? So if we're talking about analysis, can we bring the right size sample management, the right size method management, and the right size data capture to a process so that in a platform solution, we can satisfy that early discovery scientist and that late stage you know, manufacturing QC scientist with the same set of tools. Thank you.